News Talk, TNT Radio. <laughs> I thought she was talking to me, actually. Oh, we're, oh, we're back. Sorry. We're just we're having talking. a We're having a, having we're a, having a good laugh. Um, don't forget, you can call in at the end of the show. Get on our online chat as well. Uh, welcome back, though, to Ben. We were just discussing and having a good laugh at his background. Because uh, mm. I know you don't you don't like to take sides. You want to seek out the truth. And we've got a Trump uh, flag on one side and an LGBTQIA one on the other, making mm. a statement um, in one way or another, Ben. And we know yeah. you are a broadcaster that likes to talk. Uh, you are, of course, from Chasing Descent. We've had you. We've had John on. On the show and i highly recommend going to check them out at disabled journo on x and watching their podcast and show they are a great watch uh and we are here today to talk about uh the doomsday clock now i never heard of this before uh but uh i was getting ooh, yeah alerts on my phone yesterday it says doomsday clock unchanged at 90 seconds to midnight amid unprecedented level of risk are you scared ben are you scared no, i'm not i'm not scared in any way because this has been going on since before we were born this whole doomsday clock thing this was started by the um scientists so what well, like, we'll say scientists responsible for the manhattan project it's essentially a a countdown to nuclear war um, and, and then I'm reading the article here from Sky News, and, and I just want to point out a quote. Um, and now I've got to find it. It's urgent for governments and communities around the world to act, is, is what this uh, Rachel Bronson, president of the Bulletin, said. Um, well, isn't it the governments around the world that would be re responsible for said nuclear war? <laughs> It, well, exactly. And uh, it says humanity is still closer than ever to catastrophe. You have to read the whole article in that voice, because honestly, yeah. uh, and, I, and I checked it, it, this article went on every main one. It was on CNN. It was on the Daily Fail. It was everywhere. You know, and the, the sad thing about it, Ben, is do you think there are actually some people that are going to read this and actually be scared? Some older people, you know, like that, the, the, you know, we're in imminent danger. We could go to war nuclear nuclear weapons you know we're laughing is, about it but yeah but the thing is we could go to war with nuclear weapons that's that's something that could happen because let's face it governments around the world don't like each other look, just look at ukraine okay look look at ukraine for a minute uh last year i believe it was Ukraine bombed Poland by mistake uh killed killed at least one polish person maybe two and then little Vlad, Vladimir Zelensky, jumped onto the Twitter, the X, and, and gave a little stream and said, Russia have bombed Poland. We need a tactical nuclear strike against Russia right now. So there are people who, who will call for this sort of thing, and they are the ones in power, they are the ones in government, and they, they don't seem to care as to whether or not they lie in order to get what they want. No, absolutely. True. And I was going to I was going to say, uh, you know, moving on uh, and from what you've already said, uh, the doomsday clock, it says, was created in 1947 by an uh, atomic scientist. And it says the bulletin is an independent, independent nonprofit organization run by some of the world's most prominent scientists. Isn't it funny, though, that these scientists happen to follow exactly the same agenda as all the legacy and mainstream media? And they're mm. saying the main problems are AI, climate change, war. I mean, it's almost like they may have been funded by the same people, Ben. I, I don't, it, don't know. What do you reckon? It may be so. And uh, let me let me dig a little bit deeper into that, because over on our show on Chasing Descent, I've been doing a little bit, if you will, whenever we talk about scientists, where I'll halt John, my partner, if he's talking about science, I'll say, let us pray. <laughs> and uh, we'll pray to the science, because the, science. the way the mainstream and, and legacy media talk about science, you would think that science and scientists are completely infallible. Absolutely everything that they say is gospel. However, Science is a question. The idea of science is a question. Science is in flux. And I thought the idea of science was to disprove things, not 
prove things. So you you come up with a theory and then you come up with ways to see whether or not it's right to disprove it. But we've had this weird inversion in the last few years where, well, like I say, let us pray. Because anybody that, that claims to be a scientist is now an expert. Their word is gospel and they're completely and utterly infallible. And in reality, that's still not the case. They are fallible. They get a lot wrong. Talking about climate change, which you just mentioned, I saw an article yesterday that said Blackpool and other British coastal towns will be underwater by 2050. And uh, <laughs> let me just let me just uh, let you into a little bit of a teaser here. No, they won't. No, they won't. <laughs> Oh dear, Rick! Are you going to be praying? Yeah, are you going to be praying today to, to the side? No, uh, I, you know sometimes you don't need to bother God with things because they're just not going to happen anyway. And as Ben has rightly pointed out, Blackpool ain't going to be underwater in twenty fifty. Maybe no. if you're paddling in the sea, you can roll your treasures up. You might be up to your knees in water, but that's a choice. That's got nothing to do with climate change. That's having a good old paddle. Then you might have a donkey ride and a nice cream afterwards as well. That's got nothing to do with climate change either. Ben, you mentioned right at the start actually we're talking about this doomsday clock Natalie and I before the show. I'm actually very surprised Natalie that you've never heard of this thing before. It's a mm. scare tactic that's supposed to put fear into people's hearts. Yeah. But Ben, you mentioned age. You said that, you know, these things have been around from before we were born. I'm it 50 has. now, right? And back in the 80s, I was very into Iron Maiden. There's a band called Iron Maiden and they actually have a song. I'm big fan, about, big fan. Yeah, well, okay. Off the Parsley of Alden, 1985, Two Minutes to Midnight. That was a yep. Song that was written about the doomsday clock. Now that's almost 40 years ago. So let's do some mathematics. In the last 40 years, the doomsday clock has moved from two minutes to midnight to 90 seconds to midnight. At the rate we're going, it'll be another 120 years before it actually strikes the hands that threaten doom, as it says in yeah. that song Bruce, Bruce Dickinson croons out. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Although having said that, of course, nukes could happen at any time, but sure, we're not just live life day by day and you know what if if we get nuked we get nuked it's better to go out uh better to burn out than to fade away what do you reckon i completely agree with you and uh, going on things that i've been seeing on the news I, I guess related to all of this we've we've seen our own um mps this morning saying that our youth our children uh need to uh worry about being conscripted to go to war. Oh. Um, and I'm just going to put this out there and, and prosecute me if you will, government, but my two children, they're not fighting your war. It's as simple as that. Um, if these people want to have nuclear war or any kind of war, these people are the ones that need to fight it. They need to stop using us as cannon fodder and terrifying us to the point where we will just go, yes, government, we're doing anything you want, government, because we're scared, government. It's really getting on my nerves. Yeah, and uh, I, I, could, I couldn't agree more with you. We discussed conscription yesterday, and I, I said much the same. And it goes on to the question, who can we trust then, Ben, moving forwards? You know, uh, my mantra tends to be trust no one, question everything. And uh, I, I'm, I will I'm not pointing at me. So. I'm saying the only person yeah. that we can trust is us. The only person you can fully trust is yourself. And um, this is something I know we're, we're low on time, but this is something that I like to talk about a lot on Chasing Descent as well. It's that when you come and watch our show and when you watch any show, you shouldn't just blindly believe what we say or what anybody else says. What you need to do is look at everything. Look at all the angles. Look at left wing sources. Look at right wing sources. Look at people's mobile phone footage on the ground and come to your own decision. And if your decision is something completely opposite to what we believe, I think everybody here sitting in this room has the ability to have our minds changed because sometimes we're not right. We're not always going to be right. But if you trust in yourself and you trust in your ability to come to your own conclusion, you should do pretty all right. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. What a great way yeah. to end. Let's, let's finish it on an amen. An amen for the uninitiated means let it be so. So we'll finish it with an amen. And I must say, I'm a little bit disappointed with you, Ben, this morning. You've taken your Christmas tree down. And it's I know the 24th of January. Actually, I was expecting to see that there until the summer, at least. <laughs> disappointed actually, <laughs> actually yeah. I, was, I was doing a school run. Uh, last week, and my wife came in here and did it. Oh. I had no oh. choice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. So you had your Christmas tree forcibly removed by your wife. Yeah. That's a horrible... Well, maybe you can come back and tell us about that traumatic experience. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for um, marriages now, as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dictatorial, oh, ter- tyrannical <laughs> wives removing Christmas trees <laughs> in January. It's ridiculous, the, the depths yep. to which we sink here in the UK at the minute. But yep. massive yep. thanks to you this morning. Ben, uh, check out their work on Chasing Descent, especially uh, on their YouTube channel. They have a lot of uploads there with some great interviews. Very, very entertaining. And big thanks as always to Ben for taking the time out to join us this morning.